What's up everyone? So the point of this video today is to run through an overview of what I've done so far to the engine bay. If you've seen a few of my previous videos, you're probably up to date with what I've done. Um, some of this is I had custom done and some of this is parts you can buy. I'll link everything in the description below. So if you want to grab something, you totally can. So I've had a lot of questions um, from people asking what I've done or where I got something or why I did what I did. So that's kind of the point of this video is just a quick overview so far of how I've built this engine bay, what's in there, kind of what I want to do next. Um, just wanted to share with you guys. So since I've had so many questions, figured I'd make a quick video. So let's jump into it. Okay, so first things first, when I pop the hood, first thing you see is the engine cover. IND custom painted this for me. This is Interlagos Blue to paint match the car. And shout out to IND. If you've not ever ordered anything from them, those guys do a fantastic job. Everything I get is spot on. I think everyone on their team has over 10 years experience from what I understand, but they do an absolutely incredible job. If you saw my previous video installing the paint match reflectors, IND also custom matched those as well. And those are spot on as well. So if you didn't see that video, I'll link it right here. But same company, IND did these and they killed it. So. That's first thing. I had them custom paint the M tricolors in the little engine slats, so to speak. Um, and the reason I did that is because when I opened the hood, and this is kind of an idea of why I built this bay the way I did. A, I want things symmetrical. B, I'm a little OCD about it. So when I popped the hood, I wanted something paint matched. I actually thought about doing the slam panel or cooling shroud, whatever you want to call it. Um, I thought about having the original OEM one paint matched and then having the cover carbon fiber. I ended up switching that um, because when I popped the hood, I wanted that to be the focal point, like where your eyes go to the bay. Um, and then with the stock M cover right here, I thought with those colors and then the tri colors there, and then of course the roundel here, I just thought from my personal preference, it was too much of the, 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 the M colors. So I had them do that as the focal point and then had RK Titanium make this logo for the front, which fits perfectly right in there. Um, if you guys don't follow RK Titanium, I'll put their tag here. Those guys are awesome. And they also did my VIN plate right here, custom made that as well. My stock one is still under there. This kind of is, is an overlay to protect that more or less and give it some bling. But Anyways, back to that. That's why I did that. I wanted that to be the focal point and didn't want too much of the M colors to show. I just thought it might be too clashy. Uh, and then moving to the strut brace combined with the intake. Both are gloss carbon fiber, both from Dynan. Biggest thing for me, symmetrical. Um, there's some other brands out there that do a phenomenal job. They look good, but they're not symmetrical and that bothers me. Uh, I have a lot of buddies who are running big power in their S58s and their tuners are telling them that I'm not gonna name names, but some other brands out there that are really, really good quality and they look amazing. Their IATs, um, their, their intake air temperatures are actually a little bit higher than what they were on the stock intakes with them running tunes. Uh, E40, somewhere in there, seven, 800 wheel horsepower. So they're being told to put the stock intakes back on, which is interesting. So when I was looking for my intakes, I wanted something as close to stock as possible because BMW nailed that according to a couple of tuners I've talked to with getting the air to the engine and keeping it cool. Interesting. So um, the Dynan ones actually run using the stock. So from BMW, the stock Ram airs intakes tracks are right here, right under the bumper. And then they run right under the bottom section of the stock air box on both sides. So the Dynan ones keep all that so the whole bottom end of the stock box is OEM, and then the top part just mounts, and then it runs the driver's side through this channel, passenger side through here, and then it drops into both ducts to go into both the turbo inlets. So it's as close to stock as possible. You do get these inlets right here, so you get a little more of the induction noise, which obviously is a big reason why I did that, because I want to hear it. Um, so that's why I went with these. And then of course over here, you got golden wrenches, black line pieces, which are amazing. Um, billet aluminum, and they fit amazing. This is the washer fluid, uh, coolant, coolant reservoir, and the engine oil cap. 
Uh, all three of those are amazing. They do a really, really good job with their stuff and they fit amazing. If I can get it to focus. Really, really good quality. Um, so next up we've got, um, so the slam panel or cooling shroud is Autotechnic. Um, those guys did an amazing job. A few companies make these. I've gotten a several things from Autotechnic and it always comes out looking phenomenal. One note I will say, I didn't do an install video on this one, those of you who follow me. Uh, it was simple enough, but looking back, I probably should have because there was some tips and tricks I learned, I feel like. But just a reminder when you're doing carbon pieces, always put little rubber washers on here. Um, the OEM, I think aluminum one, very durable, but you have to remember when you buy aftermarket parts, like they don't know what else you have in the car, right? Like these are all dress up bolts that I bought custom titanium. Um, Auto doesn't know that. They don't know what else you have in the car. So you have to think outside the box so you don't mess up parts you get, if that makes sense, when you have multiple things that are not OEM. So in my case, with the titanium bolts with essentially metal washers and you're tightening these down, you shouldn't tighten them down because it's carbon. So you don't want to snap it anyways. It's not a structurally sound piece, so you don't need to torque it down. However, it needs to be snug. And I've seen pieces before where I've just barely tightened them and you start to almost crack off the clear coat. <laughs> yeah, um, not break it, but you're definitely marring into the clear coat of the carbon fiber. So make sure to use some rubber washers on there. It just makes it protected and it cleans it up. So. One little note there. So onto the dress up bolts. So the whole kit, all the bolts that you can see in there, all of that is polished titanium from dress up bolts. I'll link their handle right here. These guys do a, ph a phenomenal job, full titanium. And I was gonna go with the burnt titanium, similar to what RK Titanium did. But once again, I'm very particular with how I do things. And I just thought that it would be too much. I like it to be clean. I like an OEM plus look, and I thought that sprinkled color throughout the whole bay might be too much. So I went with the polished titanium. And a lot of people who have seen my bay because of all the other carbon and paint, they've actually missed that. And they, they thought it looked good. And then when I brought it up, they realized, oh wow, that does look really good. I didn't even notice that those were there. So that's kind of the goal I'm going for. I think that's pretty cool. But what I did do is the hood hardware, I actually had that in uh, the burnt titanium. So both the bolts here for both the latches and then down to where the strut support brace both of those are burnt titanium and the fit and finish of course is phenomenal and that's also dress up bolts um, so super super phenomenal uh, of course rocking the handle from vinyl status those guys do a good job as well but in a nutshell that's where we're at so far um, stock tune still uh, i've got some other goodies on the way um, some other big installs on the way. Oh, don't want to give anything away, but, uh, yeah, definitely got some, um, some nose job stuff coming here, guys. I've been waiting for a little bit. I've had the car for almost a year. I know everyone wants to jump on the front of the grill. The first thing they do to me, it didn't bother me that much. That wasn't the first thing I had to get done. You know, everyone has their own, their own, uh, things that bother them. It just wasn't mine. So, but I have picked out some, uh, front goodies that are gonna to add to aero. And I've also got some protection for the radiator that I'm gonna install. I'm gonna custom do that as well. So definitely subscribe so you don't miss that video. I think it's gonna be a good one. Some other stuff on the way, but this is about the engine bay. So we're gonna keep it here. So in a nutshell, guys, that's where we're at. That's the engine bay. Um, I think I'm probably done with aesthetics. Um, as you guys know, the, in the, the tune is stock. This car I'm keeping for a long time. Once I get this build done, I will be buying another M3. I'm looking at an E46 or E92, one of those two. Uh, I just haven't figured out, well, honestly, the market's crazy right now. So it's, I'm gonna get both of them, but <laughs> whichever one I get first is gonna be how the market is right now, right? And what quality I can find it in. But the point is, I'm keeping this for a long time. So once aesthetic gets done, I will start doing performance mods. And I just think this car is amazing. It's got a ton of power you know, 500 plus horsepower, all wheel drive. It's, it's a lot of power, um, but I would like to spice it up, unlock its full potential and, and bump the power up. But I wanted to just get a lot of the plastic, get a lot of the stuff from BMW that I thought didn't look good and make the car the way I wanted it. 
um, almost not show car, but OEM plus the way that I want the car to be sitting, stance, suspension, carbon fiber, aesthetics, all of that. So pretty much done with the engine base side of that. And then following that, we'll start doing some uh, cooling upgrades, some engine performance mods and some tuning. So that's where we're at now. I uh, just wanted to give you guys a quick update. Thank you for following me. If you haven't subscribed, consider. I got a lot more content on the way. And uh, this G80, I absolutely love this car. It's been a ton of fun. And uh, that is the engine bay so far. So I just wanted to share why I did the way I did it, why, you know, where it is right now. And like I said, everything I have, I'm gonna link in the description below so you guys can click on it and grab it yourself. So without further ado, thanks for watching. You guys have a good one and catch you on the next one. See ya.